Hey, Mike Healy here. Thank you very much again for watching my videos. I do appreciate it and hope you're, hopefully you're getting a lot out of these. Um, well, uh, obviously to continue into the vein, we've basically been going over about prosperity and what does, you know, uh, does God want you rich? You know, how does faith work? How do things operate? Uh, I got a really good teaching that kind of came on my heart to, uh, to give you an explanation of, of a verse that most people, you know, kind of a story that most people are familiar with, but most people don't have a real revelation. Again, I'm I don't want you to have head knowledge, I want you to have revelation in your heart as to what some of these things mean so that you can actually see what God wants for you in your life, good or, you know, good, good, uh, and how to get rid of the bad, okay? So, so that's, that's real important we do that. And, and the, uh, the story that I want to cover, or the actually the scriptures, it's going to be in Psalm 23. Psalm 23, most of you have uh, probably heard this quoted I don't know how many times. But I don't think a lot of people have any kind of revelation as to what this scripture meant to somebody, how to get it into your heart so that it actually means something, okay? How to make it come alive to you so that you get excited about it, okay? Because this is all, all the videos that I'm trying to, that I'm doing here for you is to encourage you because I want you to understand that there is a good future and a good hope for you, okay? So let's, let's just jump right into this. Now, in Psalm 20, uh, 23, uh, this is actually King David, who was David and Goliath. King David wrote these, uh, the Psalms, uh, and, and this is, these are his thoughts coming out through revelation of the Holy Spirit, giving them to him, God giving those the direction, and he writes these down for, our, you know, for us to use now. Okay? So here's what it says. I'm going to read it to you, and then I want to break it down step by step so you really get an understanding of this. And I'm going to show you how I use this in my life and, and some of the understandings that I've figured out for it that will help you. Okay, so let's go. So the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Uh, even when I walk through the valley of death, I will not be afraid, for you're close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Now, the, the problem that a lot of people have is they see a lot of these stories and these things that are in here as to a few more wearies, weary days here on earth, and then when we get to heaven, I'll get these blessings, and it'll all be over, and the pain will go away, and the anger will go away, and the issues that I have with you know alcoholism or whatever go away. But what the Bible is for is for you and I to get direction, instruction on how to operate in this new kingdom. So so once you're once you're saved or even if you're not saved yet, the the reason the Bible was put together for those who actually understand it and get revelation of it is it so you can walk properly in the earth. Okay? You can do it right with the right kingdom principles. So let me let me break it down. The Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. A lot of uh, a lot of the Bibles, they you know they have different, uh, not different content, but different. Like I use the New Living Translation. A lot of people hear the one. A lot of them, like out of the King James, says I believe it's the uh, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, the, what what religion has taught people that I shall not want means. It's, it's a lot of what the devil wants to do is get you through your head and make you believe that it's not good to ask God for anything, okay? That, that you know, I, I shall not want because, you know, you want to be pride, you don't want to be prideful, right? And if you've watched some of my other videos, I said, hey, if you're an idiot without money, you're going to be a big idiot with a lot of money. Good person without money, you'd be a bigger, a better person with a lot more money, you'd be a blessing to people. What it meant here is that because of the covenant that God now had with, with man through Abraham, that he read the first covenant that was really made was through Abraham. It said, the Lord is my shepherd, meaning a shepherd leads people into the right place they should go. And due to the fact that a shepherd is a good shepherd directing you know, us where we should go, I have everything I need. All of my needs are met. You know, My God shall supply back in, uh, I forget the ver uh, which book it is, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Okay, so this is good. So, and here's another one. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Everybody, the reason people play the lottery and why uh, businesses and opportunities look so amazing that, that, that say you're going to make millions and millions of dollars and, and, you know, when the lottery gets up to 50 million, like, you know, like more people play it when it's at 50, 100, 200 million dollars than they do when it's like 5 million, like that's going to make a whole lot of difference. It's everybody 
that's under the Earth curse system really is trying to get rest. The lure of the lottery is that you can have, you know, you can have your needs met without real hard labor. Okay, in Proverbs it actually talks about, you know, the blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no sorrow with it or hard labor with it. Okay, you know, yeah, we have to work, but this is different. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. So you have to picture King David writing this probably, you know, because uh, they didn't have PlayStation and a lot of, you know, TV and cable and all that stuff to distract him. He was, he was probably, you know, overlooking the kingdom and he started thinking about this and he, got a, he was at a point in his life where he had peace, okay? He lets me rest. What the word rest means throughout scripture is it means covenant fulfillment, Meaning that if, if, if you knew that the person that had millions and millions of dollars, that you were now an heir to that whole estate, okay, that you didn't have anything to worry about, you wouldn't be all stressed out. You could rest because you knew that you had enough money in the checking account. You knew how things operated, okay? That's what the Lord is trying to get to you, okay? It's not religious condemnation. It doesn't, I know there's a lot of, religions that teach that and you wonder why they won't their churches are dead and nobody's getting healed nobody's prospering nobody's being able to bless people you know don't i like i've said before you can't give to the poor even though it's directed in the bible if you're one of them okay so let's move past that now he leads me beside peaceful streams basically it allows you to operate on a completely different level of peace because you have your security and the promises of god and that's why i'm i want to teach you these things so you get the, get the peace uh, verse 3, it says, he renews my strength, okay? You are going to grow weary. And in this day and age, especially when you're doing life, uh, we're bombarded, especially as men. That's our, our role is to be the provider in the household. We're, you know, we're bombarded all the time with trying to get our thing, you know, get needs met and what do I do next and, and family and helping our wives and so on. You have to learn to put the pride away and rely on the strength through prayer that God can give you in understanding the promises. It says he guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Now, this is important. It says that he guides me along right paths. Now, in um, I think one of the uh, my favorite Proverbs, and I'm trying to remember which one it is, and uh, there's the blessing of the Lord. Blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it is in actually in uh, Proverbs 10. There it is. In 16 is what I was looking for. In, in Proverbs 16, it says, Commit your works to the Lord and, your, and then your plans will succeed. Uh, that's out of uh, Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will succeed. And this is really good is in verse 19 of chapter 16 it says we make our plans but the lord determines our steps because a lot of times i've always struggled with the fact of you know what's the difference between a good idea and a god idea because obviously i want to want to do the things that i know are going to lead to prosperity and fun and everything like that and i have missed it many times but in all things you have to understand that god is always orchestrating your steps. My pastor had a really good analogy of a dream he had that God showed him about his his future. And really what it came down to was he had a straight road, you know, kind of like this roads you would see in the desert that you're here and you see this long straight stretches, right? And at the very end of it was the end of his journey, the end of his life. And it was all great. And he and basically that was where the fulfillment was. And then he said that all of a sudden in his dream he saw those little uh, median dividers start staggering through that so you would almost if you were to walk down that road you had to now na navigate through those and then what happened in his dream was he was blindfolded which made it even worse so so even though the path was straight he knew exactly where he had to go to he still what god was showing him and what he shared with our congregation our church was that you still have to daily walk it out you have to walk it out day by day and pray about these things okay you have to pray it out like give us this day our daily bread. We've heard that, right? Give us this day our daily bread in the Lord's Prayer. And I'll cover, I'll, I'll go through, I'll break that one down for you in a teaching sometime. It'll rock your world uh, of how that, get the real revelation of that, not just a, a you know, a, a memory verse. Okay, so let me keep going here. So he guides me along right paths. So understand that if God has a good plan for you and a good future, 
If you with your if you know that in your heart you're making the right choices based on what you're doing, just understand that you can and probably will end up making a few mistakes. But my opinion is, hey, I'd rather be moving forward, you know, believing that I'm trusting and working on in God's will and knowing that I am doing the right things and God will direct my steps. Okay, that's how I've always tried to make my decisions. I sometimes go, oh, holy smokes, I can't believe I did that. Uh, but again, it always has worked out. It has always worked out. Or if I've gotten myself in trouble, God has always rescued me if I've realized that it was me that did it and I repented of something that I did or somebody something I said to somebody that I, I got my I got back on track. Okay, so now verse four, even when I walk through the valley of death, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Now this is, I'm going to take a little more time on this. I had a, uh, years ago, I was, uh, I was struggling, 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 because I had just gotten uh, saved, basically. I had received Jesus as my Lord and Savior and said, I, you know, hey, I'm, all the things I've been doing aren't working. You know, I, I like seeing the fruit of some of these people that really have good revelation are really saved uh, of what they're doing. And I, and, I gave, and I basically gave my heart to the Lord and I said, hey, what, do you, you know, what can I do? And I remember uh, I had actually had, um, I think I did have all three of my children at this time. And when I was praying, I was praying really hard, and I just I was just in a time of torment. And I remember I had this vision of me being in a dark valley, kind of like a scary dark valley. And all around me, and my family was in the valley with me. And there was a small little narrow path that was like it was just dark. It almost looked like a, a some kind of scene you would see out of Lord of the Rings or something. And I remember walking through it, and I didn't know exactly what was going on, but way up up on the hillside. I could see a light and I just knew that I was supposed to go towards that light. But what had happened was all of a sudden I remember not knowing what to do. I was in fear. And then all of a sudden I saw Jesus in this in this this dream, this vision I was having during prayer, and he reached out his hands and it was this big, strong, loving hand. And when he grabbed my hand, light came around our whole family. Light came, and all of us had were all holding hands, like in a procession that Jesus was first, then me, then Stacy, then my three kids, and we were all holding hands, and the light that shone could show me the outward uh, of, the, of the valley, and I could see what looked like demons and things like that that were kind of chirping, and Jesus wasn't phased by them, and they all just, they all kind of cowered in fear when he was there, and I remember just like he had complete confidence, grabbed my hand, and we just started walking up into that, uh, up into the, up, up that path without any hesitation and that everything was being moved and and what that had taught me with that what that revelation is I started really because it affected me I mean I cry I was crying in all my yards that uh, it said I will not be afraid because you are close beside me your rat rod and your staff protect and comfort me now let me break down your rod and your staff protect and comfort me your rod uh, because we're talking about you remember David was a shepherd before he was a king and before he defeated the Goliath. So the reason he's speaking in these, these, the way this parable is, is it's references of how he remembered how he beat off the enemy. Okay? And how, you know, when, when you're out there and wolves are trying to attack sheep, you got a club and, you know, they didn't have AK-47s back then. But that's what was happening. And it said, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Now, here's what I want to break down. Your rod, the rod is something that they would beat off the, you know, if a, 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 an animal or some other thing came against them. And throughout, you hear, before he even defeated Goliath, he stated to the King, King Solomon of why he was going to conquer David was because God had delivered him from the bear and the lion. Okay, so they weren't messing around with little, you know, little bunny rabbits back then over in that area. They had big bad things coming at, coming at them. And this is really cool is your rod and your staff. Protect and comfort me. Now, back, back in those days, a staff, what was so significant about a person's staff is it was generational, and they were like eight to nine feet tall. They were really big staffs, and they were very big and round. And what they were taught to do in that culture was they put testimonies of what had happened in their family that God had helped them with. Because before the written word, before they actually started writing things necessarily down that we, we could do it, was the word of the testimonies of what had God had done in their family's lives was on this staff. So a shepherd's out there bored, right? And maybe thinking of things and, and scared and maybe, you know, got some stuff. But he might have seen on his staff 
you know, oh, there was, uh, you know, one of my nephews who had defeated this, you know, the, killed that lion, and we, we celebrated, you know, and those types of things. So the staff is similar to, back in those days, is, is not similar, is exactly what the word is to us this day. Like, this is my staff, right? This is what I, what I get my strength from. This is how I stand. A staff also supports a person, so don't, don't forget that, okay? So, so your rod protects and your staff comforts me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. This one so misquoted is it's crazy because a lot of people think that, oh, when I get to heaven, you know, God's taking care of everything. And they've, they've read it to that point and religion has beat them over the head that there's condemnation and having good things, which is the farthest thing from the actual truth. And I asked myself this. I said, well, why would there be enemies in heaven? That makes absolutely no logical sense. So in the presence of my enemies means that here, the here and now you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my men enemies. Basically, you welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings, okay? Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. So if you take verse 5 and 6, you prepare a feast in the presence of my enemies. And I, I taught on this in another video, that your enemies are not people, okay? The Bible clearly says that we do not war against flesh and blood, but of powers and of principalities, uh, you know, demonic forces that are trying to come against you, me, the families, and whole nine yards to break down that, to break down that, uh, you know, that strength of, of knowing that. And God can use, or not God, but the devil will use people to get in your path. And you've got to understand these, that you do not war against flesh and blood. That's how it's easier to forgive somebody that maybe have wrong, you know, that wronged you uh, instead of letting builderness build up you have to see as a, God sees it, okay, that, that that happens. I mean, people that aren't saved are obviously going to operate with anger and, and, and issues. But I really like this. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. The anointing of oil back in those days represented the Holy Spirit. Uh, now we have the actual baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and the evidence of praying in tongues because when the anointing comes, that gives you the strength. That was how they anointed, like King David was anointed. Anybody now is, uh, it says that anybody that's saved is officially a priest and a king. Basically, you are, you are a priest, priestess uh, of, of the word of God, but you just got to learn some of these principles. You have to learn how to operate in these kingdom principles. And surely my goodness and unfailing. So, so when you get anointed, like now you would be basically, you, you say, thank you, God, you know, I receive you into my heart. And then when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, basically that's the, the anointing that comes upon you that allows you to start praying out these things. It gives you the power. And I'm going to do a teaching um, on the baptism of the Holy Spirit here shortly because it's very important because this is where you're going to get the, the, some revelation. You're not going to get just head knowledge. You get the, the deep revelation, the secrets, the secret wisdom is going to bubble out of you. And I'll show you and I'll explain how to do that. Surely my, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I like the word in that of pursue. You have to understand that God is not forcing anybody to get saved necessarily. You know, he wants everybody to, to, to not you know, perish. Um, but he, he is also always pursuing somebody with love and compassion and, and, you know, and lifting that little kid up, that person up. It's been so twisted as that God's a bad God and he kills babies and my aunt, you know, and why are people dying of cancer? You have to understand that God is a good God yesterday, today, and forever. He is not. It says that um, that he is a father of all good things. Anything that comes from that is evil that we would consider evil comes from the devil. The best thing that the devil's doing is getting a lot of people confused as to who's really doing these things. And, you know, that's, and you'll see a lot of, uh, uh, you know, you'll, you see a lot of people that have anger issues is if you really go back into their past, it was where they may have been, you know, they had abusive things going on. They couldn't really represent the father. And, and I'll do a whole teaching on the father's love and things like that because that was a real revelation to me. But um, I, one example is uh, I saw a, uh, you know, a, an interview with some heavy metal guys, actually a, a group of guys that were heavy, hardcore heavy metal and because I used to be a, a, a big heavy metal guy myself, and uh, they were they all they do is they talk about Satan and all these things, and they, they put down they say that religion doesn't exist. Well, if religion doesn't exist, or you know that there's no God, 
well, if there's no God, then where did the devil come from? <laughs> you know, that's what I was thinking in my head, but I understood where it came from. And, and it was basically, if you track back with these guys, a lot of them were, uh, were either abused or they had religion used against them improperly, and they never received any revelation of love. It was all out of condemnation. Okay, So, so if you understand this scripture right here as to how it was actually supposed to be meant and, and ministered to somebody, it's a fulfilling and an encouraging word. It's not just a beat you over the head word of, you know, word that you have to go to church. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I, you know, I, do, I shall not want. Okay, that just makes no logical sense. And, and, in, and the Bible says in God, Jesus himself said, come to me as a little child. A little child at my house, when I have, when, and I have kids, when, when we're at the dinner table, they don't, they don't sit there and cower that they can get something from the table. Right? They just demand it. They, the little, ki little kids that know that I love them demand the, the, demand the biscuits. My pastor says it really well. He says, you know, pass the biscuits. The kids aren't going to go, well, I hope dad will give me biscuits today. You know, and if you're in a fan, if there's probably families like that, so it's, you know, doing stupid stuff like that. But at my house, because they know that I'm a good dad and that I love my children unconditionally, that when they ask for food, I give it to them. It's, it's not a question of, you know, oh, hey, hey, you know, being pretty greedy with those biscuits. If I got 50 biscuits, they can eat. I know I'd never let them eat 50 biscuits, but you see what I'm saying. And it's so misquoted all the times. And, and when I got revelation of this, when I heard the first time this was actually properly taught to me, it just exploded in my heart, okay? Because the Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me in the right way that I should go. He, he, I have everything uh, that I need due to the fact that he's leading me in the right places. He's getting me away from the wrong things that I had been doing year after year after year and wondering why nothing is changing. He's giving me the strength that I need day by day, bringing, which brings honor to his name because if he's helping you and you understand that it was him that gave you the help, you will tell other people about it so that it, they can actually receive revelation. Okay, And when you walk through the valley of death, you're not gonna, you don't have to be afraid because you can stand on the word and it's going to change your life. And then you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Again, not people. People aren't your enemies. But, you know, uh, there are demonic forces going on out there that are trying to, put, you know, come against people. And, 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 you know, and I can go into deeper detail on that. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness, uh, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. So... If you, if you start to meditate on some of these things and, and these teachings that we're doing here, you're, you're going to see that there's a, it, it'll start to bubble up in you because it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I'll do a teaching on faith as well. And, and who knows, you've already, maybe already seen that video or whatever if I've already put it out and you just found this somewhere. But be encouraged. Your best is yet to come. God has not forget, uh, forgot you, forgotten you, proper English. Uh, he is a good God all the time, every time. He, he's the one that ble it wants blessings in your life. He wants you to have a good marriage. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to score touchdowns. He wants to bring honor to your name because of you understanding what he has paid the price for and so on. So hopefully that encouraged you. Again, um, your best is yet to come, and I'll see you at the top.